Okay, so problem seven is another pretty simple one, or at least simple to understand. So, what is the ten thousand first prime number? So, what we're going to do, we're going to list all the prime numbers and see which one's the ten thousand first one. So, it gives an example here of the first six. It tells that the sixth is thirteen. So, yeah, shouldn't be too difficult. I'm going to actually do this in sort of like a brute force kind of way. Um, there's probably cleverer ways to do it, and I don't think this way here is going to be the best computation wise, but hopefully it'll be quite easy to understand and it's going to introduce a little bit of new, new syntax we've not used before. So hopefully it's helpful. So what we're going to do is find main. We're going to have a number that we're going to find up to. So number prime to find. So this is going to be called 6 to start with. We're just going to do the test example so we can find 13. Now, x is going to start out equal to 2. This is going to be the number that we iterate over. Um, x is going to be basically a number that just increases. We're going to say, is x prime? If it is, add it to this list. If it's not, just increase it until we find one that we can add to the list. So then we're going to have list of primes. It's going to be empty. We don't know any primes yet. Um, so yeah, simple. Um, now what we're going to do, we're going to say while len of so while len list of primes is less than the number prime to find we're going to say now this is the new syntax so if all x uh, mod prime for prime in list of primes then we're going to list of primes dot append and we're going to append x so what this is going to do here is it's going to say if all checks um, for every of the iterable so the thing we're iterating over is the list of primes um, so we're saying th this little line here is basically um, it's basically like for prime in prime uh, for prime in list of primes um, if x mod uh, mod prime then do something but the difference here is this would only need one of them to satisfy it and then it would jump into this loop whereas this thing up here needs um, every single one to return true therefore it can jump in um, have a mess around with this yourself, see if you can understand what it does, but basically it just checks that every condition is true, so you'll see why it's important in a sec. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to append there, then we're going to say um, x plus equals 1, because we need x to go up. I'm actually going to make this 2, because uh, I'm a... No, I'll, I'll keep it at 1 for now, and we'll increase it in a bit. Um, and now we're going to say print uh, print list of primes and I'm not sure why um, why this is not on the line but we'll see so print that list then call main down here now you see here we actually we get a list of primes um, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 we've got 6 primes so if we print out list of primes, um, so we want the minus one, we want the last element, um, you see we get 13, so to find the sixth prime we just put a six in there and it prints it out. Now if I put um, a thousand in here, uh, I'm actually going to get rid of this print right here because otherwise it's going to spam the console with loads of numbers. Um, you see, pretty quick to do it. Now, 10,001 again. Now, it's not overly quick, but it's still pretty quick. It's going to print it out any second, hopefully. I've actually put too many zeros in this. Um, that should be 10,001 like that, not 100,001. 10,001 should manage pretty fine with this. 
So there we go, 104,743. Now, if I jump back to the answer, 104,743. So we've got the answer there, pretty quick, pretty easy. Um, but there is a couple of improvements we can make. So I'm not going to actually do these. These are just sort of things I'm going to suggest that you can do on your own if you're interested in improving this code. Um, so we don't actually have to check all of these primes. Um, we know that x is only going to be divisible by the prime if the prime is less than the square root of it. So for example, if you're checking if 100 is prime, you don't need to check if 11 can divide into it because you know that um, if 11 divides into it there's a number smaller than 10 that, much pe that must pair with 11 to divide into it. So for example you don't need to check 20 because even though 20 divides into 100 20 times 5 is 100 so 5 would have also divided into 100 so you can cut down your like the size you need to, to check uh, if I go, uh, what should we do? Should we print? So if I say, look for the tenth prime. Now we're going to print the whole list of primes. Um, actually, print the hundredth. So. All we need to check in this list of primes, uh, if we're checking, say, when, when we did 41, right, if we're checking that 41 is prime, we don't need to check if 41 can be divided by, say, 17. Um, 17, if it can go into 41, would have been paired with a number that's around 2 or 3. So we'd have already checked it down here. Um, we'd have already checked its pair, so we never need to check the actual number. So, yeah, basically, you only need to check up to the square root. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, then don't worry about it. You don't need to know this to be able to do it. Um, but, yeah, you can minimise the amount of numbers you're actually having to check by in including something along them lines. Um, you can improve the iterating x thing. You could have... Uh, what you could do, you could start x at 3, and you could say a list of primes is 2. And then you could do something like this, so then if we do 10,000 and first um, you'll see this is actually probably significantly quicker than it was before um, it's not going to be here actually because we're printing this so hopefully this is going to be significantly quicker than it was before and not make me look stupid so there you go, if I time these you'll see there is probably a, a significant difference, so import time Start time. I'm not going to do all the fancy format and stuff. I'm just going to do the uh, time dot time minus start time. Now, if we run this, and then we drop this back to the two. Get rid of that. Drop this back to the one. So first one took six seconds. That's the one that I'm expecting to be the fastest. I'd probably suggest. Well, I'd probably. I'd have a guess that this is going to take. I would have said about ten seconds, but it seems it doesn't actually make that much of a difference. Um. Interesting. So, the reason I'm guessing that there's not much of a difference here. Um, is that let me run this once more just to make sure there definitely is a difference I'm pretty sure there will be but it'll only be small and I'm pretty sure I know why now so yeah there, there is a difference this one's obviously 6.5 this one's 6.5 these are the fast ones these ones are both 6.6 .6. so the reason I'm guessing is because obviously if it's say you're checking 3 and then you iterate 3 to 4 um, back on this this one right here so when you change to an even number, the first number you check in this statement here is going to be 2. So it's going to like fail immediately. 
So you're only checking this line of code once. It's going to fail and then you're going to reiterate it. So it's faster to do it the way I just showed you with the, the three and then the two in there and then the two here. But it's not significantly faster. Um, in fact, I wouldn't even add it in because I, I prefer stuff like this where it's a little bit more generic. Um, but yeah, that, that's quite interesting. I thought we'd have got a bigger improvement there, but I've realised now why and quite interesting. So yeah, the, the main improvement you can get is uh, you need to say like you need to put some limit on how big this prime number can get. Uh, it needs to go up to the square root of x. Um, if you put that limit in, then you will get a significant speed increase uh, in this code. Um, I'm not going to do it, but feel free to do it yourself. If you like the video, like it. If you want to see more of this stuff, subscribe. Um, and other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.